bang, bang. YouTube, what's up, man? It's your boy Mega Bells, man. Thank Mega TV, Mega Guns. It's been a while, y'all, since I really had to sit down and do an actual video for y'all like this. School has been, you know, I'm, I'm working towards getting my degree. I graduate in December, and, you know, classes got a little, you know, overwhelming. I'll say that, you know, so I had to take my little time, fall back. I haven't been to the range in a while. Yeah, I just really been locking in at school and really trying to get this done. Some good grades as well. But 1911 platform is something I'm into now. My first 1911, I think, was the Rock Island Double Stack 10 millimeter 1911. And um, I also had one of the traditional 1911. So my first 1911 and 45 was the Rock Island, um, the A1, you know, that one with the brown wood grip. And that was my first actual 1911 chambered in 45, single stack magazine, all of that. That's a good introductory. I've always had eyes on other higher end models, I should say. I was really looking at the um, Springfield Ronin. And I still like that. I like the look of it. But my really, the one I really want more than anything is the um, Springfield Emissary. Like I've, I've held that gun. I just like everything about it from the look to the texture of the grip. But yeah, I know I'd be on Gun Broker. And you know how you had that bed where I don't expect this to win, but if it do, hey, I ain't mad. So you know I did that. I saw um, Ruger SR1911 Lightweight Commander. Didn't really know much about it, to be honest with you. I didn't even know much about Ruger 1911s, to be honest. I was always looking at Springfield, Colts. You know what I'm saying? I even saw some Smithfield and, I mean, Sm Smithfield. Smith and Wesson, Smithfield is an area out here in VA. You know what I'm saying? So confused. Excuse me. But um, yeah, I saw some Smith & Wesson joints that was nice. Um, you know, even the Tesis. You know, it's some nice Tesis models that got a lot of good reviews. So, but I had one, I didn't want to go, you know, low budget. I wanted to get something like, eight range or better. I ended up seeing this. I made a bid on it. And one of those bids, I didn't think I would win. And um, I ended up winning it. So what I'm gonna do now is, it hasn't been shot. It is empty, there's no magazine. And as you can see, there's nothing in the chamber. You know what I'm saying, the gun is empty. Being that I haven't shot it, and I'm, I will be going to the range soon, if y'all can see all of that, you know, when they have guns in storage, especially 1911s, they put the grease and all of that on it. So I'm gonna clean all of that off, clean all this off, and I'm just gonna show a little, the field stripper cleaning of this Ruger 1911. All right, y'all, so before you clean or anything, fail strip, you wanna always make sure the gun is clear and safe, there is no magazine, and chamber is empty. So, with the 1911, and this 1911 has the barrel bushing, doesn't have the bull barrel, so you know the best thing to do is set it back. You wanna put the safety on. And they do have wrenches and you know, things like that. But to be honest, you know, you can just use your finger, press it down, slide it out the way a little bit like that. Then continue to push it all the way. But you wanna have your pressure on it because it is under spring tension. And you loosen that, remove the little cap. <clears throat> then you take the firearm, take the safety off, move the slide back so you see that notch right there, that notch put it right there and you push from this side, you push this pin through. And when you have it right here at this notch, it'll just slide out with no problem just like that. Take that out, you can put that to the side. Now you can slide your, slide off the frame. For now, I'll put the frame to the side. And you want to take your recoil spring and you can just pull it out this way. Then you take your barrel bushing, push it to the other side so you can 
unlock it and pull that out. Then you push your barrel link forward. Put a little push up on the barrel a little bit and you can slide your barrel right out your slide. And that is the fail stripping. I'm gonna go ahead and make the cleaning quick. And you know, it's not that, it's not really dirty or anything. It's not overly dirty. But the main thing is that I wanted to point out was, you know, the, the little grease and oil. So you know, I start by just wiping it with the microfiber cloth. Just give it a quick wipe down. Nothing major, because it really doesn't need actual cleaning. It's really more so just wiping off. Clean, you want to get there, whatever lubrication they had, because you don't know how long the gun has been sitting. So whatever lubrication they may have had on it while the gun was just, you know, on the shelves, you want to get all of that off. Do a light cleaning of the gun, re-lubricate it, and I know I did that with my Springfield Prodigy and I didn't have any issues out of it. Still to this day, I haven't had any issues out of my Prodigy. It um, over, I think 1500 rounds now and not one hiccup, not one, not anything. Forty-five caliber. So let's start with the, um, the frame. Because that's really where I saw most of the the uh, grease seem to be on the frame. So I'm gonna start with that. This CLP I'm gonna be using. It's it's just a CLP. I'm not sure of the actual brand right now, but I, you know, I put them in these um, smaller bottles because it makes it easy to, you know, carry around with me to in my range. This is actually the range bag. I mean, the little cleaning kit I take to the range with me, and I usually have nine millimeter. That's why I got the nine millimeter boar snake. I'm just gonna clean in the rails, you know, along the rails, under the rail. And as you can see, it's not even really dirt coming from under here. I just wanted to, I just feel better when I clean, like even that little, it's like not much dirt at all. I just feel better cleaning, you know, a gun when I get it and lubing it up myself. Let me just see, just to see if there's any dirt anywhere around here. Nope, not much dirt at all. So we're not gonna spend much time with this. And do a little bit on the slide. I guess when I said I was starting with the frame, I actually showed that it's more dirt on the slide. Put a little oil in the um in the rails and a little 
a little bit in the barrel lug. I mean, not the barrel lug, but you know, the recess with the barrel six. And I'm just gonna do a quick wipe down. Nothing too major, not nothing too detailed. Just wanna um, get this stuff. Anything that might have been in here, off of here. Run a little patch through the barrel. pretty much just to see if anything is um you know in case there might be anything inside the barrel a little pretty much some like dry dust but nothing really nothing major be running another dry patch through it because I will be going to shoot this. If I was just letting it sit, I'd run the oil through the barrel, the light oil through the barrel and let it sit. But when you're going to shoot, you don't want no lubrication inside the barrel. So <clears throat> just run this through a couple times. brush because like I said it hasn't been shot it has just, the barrel's not dirty like you know like that no carbon anything like that so after that take another dry punch and again like I said this is just the first initial cleaning it's not something that you have to do but you know I would recommend it you know Especially when you know you're getting a used gun or something that you don't know how long it's been at the particular gun store or wherever it was. You don't want to um, just take it and, you know, start shooting it. You just want to look into it and, you know, do your due diligence so you know you did your part. Good to go. And like I said, it's just light oil in for the nineteen eleven. Nothing major. But then again, you know, 1911s do kind of like to run wet sometimes, depending on the brand or model. So, you know, you can pretty much read your manual, make your own judgments if you have your, if you have some knowledge about it, dealing with it. And we all know it's millions of videos to show you. So now with all of that done, you wanna take your barrel, let me just give this a little wipe down with the, with the microfiber cloth. And if you take your barrel, put your barrel lug, you know, down, forward, slide your barrel back in. 
take your cap, get it in, push it to the side. You wanna take your um, barrel lug, push it vertical, not back like that, but vertical. But while we, we'll go ahead and put the recoil spring in. We want the little cupped part to be on the barrel. And then you want your barrel lug to be vertical like that. Now I've said I've saw a lot of videos that say, you know, sometimes the simplest way is to just take, you know, let me put a little oil on the um, rails of the frame. I almost forgot about that. So they say, a lot of videos will show you that when you have your barrel lug where you want it vertical like that, it's easier to take the frame upside down, slide it on that way to try and keep your, you know, your barrel lug in the position you want it in. Turn the gun over. As you can see, I don't know if y'all can see in that hole, but I don't know how good it's showing you, but if you gotta see that little hole, make sure you see your barrel lug there. And you can like play with it a little bit. Okay, you see it just went in, it went through. And now you bring your slide back to where that notch is, where you pulled it out and you want to Turn it upwards. You don't want to get that scratch on your frame. The idiot scratch as it's called. But all you do is you put your take down pan right there and you push upward. And there you go. That's it. Now, now you can take your Put your safety on, take your cap, press it down. Once you move the, see it'll hold it. Push it down a little bit more, holds it more. Push it the rest of the way. Locks into place. Then you wanna do a function check. safety make sure take it this manual safety the thumb safety off excuse me check your grip safety with your thumb safety on you want to check your grip safety make sure that, that you're pulling the trigger don't make the hammer fall with the thumb safety off you want to not press the grip safety pull the trigger make sure the hammer doesn't fall then with the grip safety and thumb safety off guns point in the safe direction you pull the trigger, make sure the hammer does fall, keep the trigger held, cycle it, make sure it resets, and it's all good to go. It's clean, and it is ready for, to be, for its first firing, which will be today. Actually about to head to the range now. That's what it is, y'all. So that is the field stripping and cleaning of the Ruger SR 1911 Lightweight Commander. Um, I will have um, some more content coming. Like I said, I'm going to the ranch today. We'll be shooting that, but I got some other things in store that I will shoot while I'm there. So I'm, I will be producing more content and coming with more things. Um, it won't be the long hiatus like it has been, but 
I will say that, you know, until I graduate in December, and it's mid-December, I think like the 12th, between the 12th and the 15th, something like that. But um, mid-December, I'll be graduating, so you know the content will really turn up after that. Until next time, y'all, Mega Guns, think Mega TV, think greater than, and above all, be responsible. Bang, 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 bang. Bang, 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 bang.